All right, there is one last application in this solutions unit. And that is to write net ionic equations. There is a procedure we follow to do this. First thing we do is either write an equation, balance an equation. We have to get a balanced equation. And that balanced equation has to have state in it. Solid, liquid, gas, and aqueous. And I say get a balanced equation because it depends on how we're going to be asked to do these questions. It could be where they give you the reactants and you have to figure out the products and then you've got to balance the whole thing. And then you've got to use your solubility tables to figure out what's solid, what's aqueous, and so on. Going back to the first um, semester and using a lot of those skills that we learned there along with stuff that came from third quarter very cumulative kind of thing which I think a lot of you are figuring out is very difficult if you don't know the parts well at any rate you need a balanced equation that has all the states in it aqueous solid liquid and so on the next thing that we're going to do in the process is go through and break down all the aqueous things into their component ions. We're going to dissociate all the aqueous solutions. And dissociate just again brings break the ionic compound down into its component positive and negative ions. Then we're going to replace all the aqueous solutions with the ions. So we'll go back through and cross out all the aqueous solutions and rewrite it with the component positive negative ions instead. We will cross out we call spectator ions. These are ions that we have on both the reactant and product side. They're just hanging out there. There's really nothing, anything happening to them. That's why we cross them out and then rewrite the equation with whatever's left. Simple. Right? All right, so let me do a couple of these as a demonstration to show you how it's done. Maybe assist you with being able to figure out this homework. I want to fit on the screen or not. It does. Good. All right, so here's our reaction. We have aqueous sodium chloride reacting with aqueous lead to nitrate to produce solid lead chloride, lead to chloride, and aqueous sodium nitrate. This is a precipitation reaction. It's a precipitation reaction because we have two aqueous solutions combining to make a solid. That solid is called a precipitate. Now, step one, get a balanced equation with the states in it. Well, this one already has states in it, but this one's not balanced. So that's the first thing we'd have to do is balance this out. And I'm just going to visually balance it, scanning through, adding coefficients where I find they're needed. So I start with sodium. There's one sodium on this side. I go over to this side of the equation. There's only one sodium there, so that's good. One chlorine on the reactant side, two on the product side. That's out of balance. So I'll throw a two out in front of the sodium chloride to fix that. I'd have two chlorines there, two chlorines there. Now whenever I add a coefficient in this method, I have to go back and I have to start the whole thing over. Two times one is two sodiums, only one sodium over here. So I have to add a two there to balance the sodiums out. And again, start over. 
2 times 1, 2 sodiums, 2 times 1, 2 sodiums. 2 times 1, 2 chlorines, 2 times 1, 2 chlorines. 1 times 1, 1 lead, 1 times 1, 1 lead. 1 times 2, 2 nitrates, 2 times 1, 2 nitrates. Now it's a balanced equation. So again, that first step in the process is a little bit vague because it all depends on whatever you're given to do. If you're given the equation and there's no states in it, you would have to use ye old solubility table to figure out what the states are. If it's not balanced, you'll have to balance it. If they only give you the reactant side, you'll have to figure out the product side. There's all kinds of ways this can be given to you. Once you have the balanced equation, the next thing to do is dissociate all the aqueous solutions. So anything with an AQ on it, you got to break it down into ions. So the 2NaCl needs to be broken down into ions. Splits right there. Breaks down into positive sodium and negative chlorine. There are two sodiums. And there will be two chlorines. Whenever you have a coefficient, it applies to both the ions that you're going to break it down into. We have two NaCl's. And because of that, we'll get two Na's and we'll get two Cl's. If you think of it as the number of atoms have to be the same on both sides. Two times one means two sodiums. Two sodiums, two times one. Two times one means two chlorines. Two times one is two chlorines. The charges have to cancel out over here. Two times plus one is plus two. Two times negative one is negative two. So the charges cancel out. Moving on to the next AQ, the lead two nitrate. PbNO3, 2. Breaking it down splits right there. A positive lead ion and two nitrates. When you have a subscript, it's going to end up changing the number of moles of that particular ion. So we have two on that nitrate, which means we have two moles of nitrate. Now this is on your list of polyatomic ions as a negative one. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. This side has to cancel it out, so lead is a plus 2. Thus the name, lead 2 nitrate. Lead 2 chloride is a solid. We don't break those down. We only break down the AQs. Sodium nitrate is an AQ, so we have to break it down. Splits right there. Again, whenever you have a coefficient, it carries through to both. So we have two Na's, each one with a charge of plus one, and we have two nitrates. And again, each one of those are negative one. So there we have dissociated all the aqueous solutions. Now we're going to replace these three things in the equation with what they break down into. So we're getting rid of all the aqueous stuff. So the NaCl gets replaced with this. The lead to nitrate gets replaced with this. We didn't do anything with the lead two chloride because again, it's solid and we don't do anything with the solids. And the sodium nitrate gets replaced with that. So that is the replacement part. We have gone through, we dissociated all the aqueous solutions. Then we go back in and we replace all those aqueous solutions with their component ions. We dissociated them for a reason. Next step, cross out the spectator ions. The spectator ion is one that you find on both sides of the arrow. So, 2Na on this side, 2Na on that side, that is a spectator ion, we cross it out. 2Cl minus 1 over here, no Cl minus 1 over there, we leave that one. Pb plus 2, no Pb plus 2, leave that one. 2NO3 negative 1, 2NO3 negative 1, it's on both sides. Cross it out. Cross out the spectator ions. 
Now we rewrite the equation with whatever's left. That's left, 2Cl minus 1. That's left, Pb plus 2. And that's left, PbCl2. What we've just done is we have distilled this entire chemical equation down into what's really important. What's really happening here is that the chloride ions and the lead ions are getting together to make lead to chloride. That is a net ionic equation. Let's see if I get one more in here without making this video too, too long. Let's do one where we've got to use a solubility table. Let's do one off the back of your practice sheet. Let's, no, I don't want that one. Trying to find one that's not going to take us forever. I'm going to do number 10. Zirconium 4 hydroxide, which it tells us is a solid. Hydrogen nitrate, which you're going to learn to call nitric acid in the next unit. That's aqueous. Zirconium 4 nitrate. And it doesn't tell us the state of that and water. All right. That's the equation. That is what we're going to do. All right. This equation needs to be balanced, so we need to take care of that. We'll do the long way this time. One zirconium on this side. Hydroxide's over here, but it's not appearing to be over here. It really is, but it doesn't look like it is. So we're going to break it down. Four oxygens, four hydrogens. What's on the inside times what's on the outside. One times four, one times four. And then uh, we have another hydrogen there, so we can change that to 5. And then nitrate, NO3. We have one of those. Same list on this side. One zirconium. One oxygen. Two hydrogens. Four nitrates. I gotta balance it. it. Really doesn't matter where we start. So we have four hydrogens over here. We want to get four hydrogens over there. We can stick a four out in front of the water to do that. Four times two gives us eight hydrogens. Four times one gives us four oxygens. Hooray. Now, we can either fix the hydrogens or we can fix the nitrates. It doesn't really matter. Let's go ahead and fix the nitrates first because it's going to be easier. It just looks easier, right? Five and eight, one and four. Let's fix the nitrates next. We'll stick a four there. So, follow me. Four times one gives us four hydrogens here. Four times one gives us four hydrogens there. Four, eight. Happy accident as good old... Uh, that old, um, what's his name? The painter, uh, Ross, would say. Happy accident, we fixed that. And then four times one gives us four nitrates. Now that is a balanced equation. Bob Ross, that's his name. All right, so we got a balanced equation. Congratulations. Next thing we gotta do is figure out the states of these. Well, water's easy. We know that's a liquid. Good enough. This, however, zirconium nitrate is going to be trickier. And our solubility table isn't really going to address this one. So we need a basic set of solubility rules to look at. I didn't give you one of those. So what you can do is you can get on the old internet. I 
and search solubility rules and take a look at them. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just pulling up some solubility rules. And I need to take a look and see if I can find one with zirconium in it. And as I look over these solubility rules, I'm going to look at nitrates, NO3, and see what it says about nitrates in here. Because I don't see anything about zirconium specifically. It would be an odd one to see anyways in a set of solubility rules. I see sulfates, I see hydroxides. Salts containing nitrate ions, NO3 negative one, are generally soluble. So this is gonna be an AQ, most likely. And again, that's just, let me show you what I did. I just went on the internet and searched solubility rules, and I looked it up and I found nitrates in it. NO3 is generally soluble. So there you go. That's how that's done. Hopefully the rest of them are on there, or I just gave you a really hard assignment to do on your senior trip, which would be fun anyway. So hey, enjoy that. The rest of you will be practicing it in class with me, so it'll be easier. Now, balanced equation. We have to go through and break down the AQs. So we have that as an AQ, 4HNO3, and we have that as an AQ, ZR. And O three four. This one breaks down there and gives me four H pluses and four N O three minus ones. And then this breaks down right after the zirconium, giving a Z R with some positive charge. And again, the subscript belongs to the nitrate, so it's four N O threes, and each one's negative one. 4 times negative 1 means that's negative 4. This one has to be plus 4 to compensate, which is why I was calling it zirconium 4 nitrate. Now we got to get rid of the AQs and replace them with what we just did. That was a solid, so that just stays the way it was. The hydrogen nitrate, or as like I said, you're going to call nitric acid before too long is this. That one we broke down into that. And that's just liquid water that doesn't break down. Ooh, fun stuff. Look for spectator ions. That one's not on the other side. H pluses, I don't have H plus, so that's important. 4NO3, 4NO3, boom and boom. That's the only thing is we get to cancel out. So that ionic equation, rewrite it with what's left. ZROH4 plus 4H plus 1s produces ZR plus 4s and water. Again, distilling it down into what really matters. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I gotta say, is yeah. <laughs>